So, you know, these are really good conditions for a jerk bait. It's clear water, you got timber, you got rock, you got, you know, all three species here at Table Rock. And they really focus on shad. So we've we had a big front come through. It's cloudy. Um, it's gotten windy now. So you know you you can use a lot of colors but what i want to do on a day like today is make something that's super visible so this is an oyster color it's basically bone with blue glimmer on it and it's like a beacon out there so they see it from a long ways away these fish are feeding on a day like today and you need something that's that's you know going to be real visible i mean obviously this is a really natural shad color and you can still catch them on it but this is just going to show up another five or ten feet away to the fish and when conditions are like this it's all about just getting them to see your jerk bait. So I want to, you know, have something real bright. Sexy shad be another really good color. You know, bright, loud uh, colors on days like today. When it's cloudy and windy, throw bright. When it's sunny and and calm, that's when you want to go more natural. So that's why we have all those colors in the box. Hey, come back. Hey, come back. Smallmouth, not a big one. Nice one though. When you got wind like this, you know you you got a lot of options. And uh, one of the things that I love about a jerk bait is it, it can really uh, it can really call them up from a long distance. And you know throwing a, a bright color like this, it's cloudy, windy. The fish should be active. Um, I can fish it even a little more aggressive. You know, even in this colder water, I'm you know I'm not letting it pause for five or ten seconds or anything like that. I'm keeping it. You know, I'm giving it a good pause, but I'm keeping this bait moving. This is a Strike King 300 series deep diver. And, uh, you know, it really gets down there. It gets down to about 12, 12 foot on a good cast. I'm throwing it on 12 pound line. And, uh, you know, it's just so efficient for everything, you know, from 25 foot to the bank, you know, they can see this thing. So I'm trying to, you know, hit this mid zone and, and see how these fish are set up. So this is, uh, you know, a really good transitional point where the old river channel swings right against the bank and it's a bluff and it kind of meets a, a gravelly point and kind of runs out in here. So it's a perfect place with the wind blowing on it like that for bass to sit up there and be able to ambush some bait fish right now with this kind of wind. So, you know, when I hook that fish, man, I just immediately hit spot lock and it's so nice on these windy days, you know, it just, I can sit here and just pick this apart and that trolling motor just holds me exactly right there so I can really focus on, on my presentation. You know, the biggest thing with a jerk bait is you gotta fish it with slack in the line. You know, you can see I point the rod back at the lure, pop it a couple times, pick up the slack. Never move that bait with your reel. You know, I'm, I'm just standing here on the back deck in the wind and now you wanna pause it a little bit. You wanna have it sit there occasionally, but it's so important to start and finish with slack. You know, after that, it's, it's a matter of figuring out the cadence on the given day. Today, with the conditions we have, these fish should really be biting. It shouldn't be near as critical as it is, you know, on a high, bright, calmer day where you really have to talk those fish into biting. You know, Mega Live is another great tool for a jerkbait because you can watch those fish follow it, you can see how they're reacting to it, and change your retrieve to match it for that particular day. So, but also just really look at that lake master. You know, when you when you fish a couple of points and and you, you know you, you fish three and then you catch uh, two or three fish off one, just look at what's a little bit different on the map and with your eyes to see uh, if there's something that really tips off a clue to where they're at. And I really try to. Uh, think about, hey, when I got that one to bite, you know, was he 12 foot of water, 10 foot of water, 8 foot of water? Just really pay attention to those little details as you're fishing on, uh, on days like this because you can really home in and then keep yourself in the highest, you know, the water that's going to give you the most productivity. You know, so when I'm fishing a jerk bait, you know, having the right equipment is, is to me is really critical. Um, this is a rod that I designed just for fishing this, uh, these particular baits. Uh, it's a six foot, 10 inch, medium heavy action. It's got a lot of backbone, but it's got an extra fast tip. So when I'm snapping that bait, it's really making it jump in the water. It's a loose GC2. So the rod is for sure the most critical piece of the jerk bait technique or, or my jerk bait technique. You know, I've got it matched with a um, seven five to one gear ratio loose. This is a hyper mag right here. 
The reel is the least important thing. I never move this bait towards the boat with the reel. I'm always working it with the rod. The reel's just picking up slack line. You know, out here today, we're on Table Rock Lake. It's a real deep, clear lake, especially now, uh, this time of year, I'm fishing a lot of main lake points, really trying to get that bait to its maximum depth. I'm using 12 pound Bass Pro XPS fluorocarbon. And, um, you know, I've got the 300 series KVD deep diving model on. So this bait will easily dive to 12 foot, um, so, you know, if you're fishing it in clear water, you, these fish can see it from 20 to 25 foot and actually come up there and, and bite it. So it's really covering a lot of the water column that way. If you're fishing where it's a little dirtier or you want the fish, uh, they're a little shallower over grass, you know, I'll go to a, you know, just the standard 300 series. And you can see this is a color that I really like. These cloudy, windy days like this, it really makes a difference um, having that visibility. I want it to be natural because, you know, the fish is looking up at that jerk bait. Today, it's all about getting them to see it as far as possible under these conditions that I'm fishing it. We got a lot of wind, so it's visibility is, is key. I've got it, uh, the hooks changed out to those Mustad uh, number four, you know, KVDs, they're extra short. They're super strong. I'm just a huge believer in those. Um, you know, we make a series now that comes standard with those from Strike King, but it's just a really good setup. This is something I have a ton of confidence in. A jerk bait is such a great tool for this time of the year where they won't chase necessarily a swim bait sometimes or, or even a crank bait. They'll come and, and, and bite that jerk bait for sure. That's a good one there too. Oh yeah, real good one. <laughs> Spotted bass. Gosh. He thought he found him a good shad there. You can just see how that jerk bait just glows in this water. You know, under these conditions, man, it's just it's just about getting them to see it. And if you got dirty water, it's kind of the same thing. You know, you want to use, you know, real bright colors. I think that's why down here, you know, that table rack shad was such a popular color. You get days like this, you know, that, that chartreuse and the purple back, it just, it's real visible. So, um, it's natural though. I mean, you can see the, the, you know, when they're looking up at it, the bottom of every shad, every bait fish is white, just like this. So, I mean, look at, look at that. It's just something that's really, really visible for them to see. And, uh, you know, under these conditions, that's, that's good. You know, you get a sunny day, man, it's hard to beat those flashy colors like chrome and that for that same reason. Natural, yet visible, that's what I'm looking for.